Dear grade 12 students, welcome back. In this presentation, we will be covering English 312, Unit 5, Lesson 2. Before I proceed further, I would request you to please bring your textbook, your notebook or papers, a pen or a pencil, and even a dictionary because you might need to refer to it and have yourselves comfortably seated. And now, let's start with the lesson. The lesson is going to be about fact and opinion model auxiliaries for expressing opinion. Learning objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify model auxiliaries, apply model auxiliaries in context to express opinion, write a paragraph using model auxiliaries to express agreement and disagreement. So. Model auxiliaries, as we said, it helps the person to express his or her opinion. When speaking, how do you usually express your opinion? So if you're going to tell your friend something, what are you going to use? I think, in my opinion, I believe, and so on. Whereas if we are going to use it in a written form, how are we going to say it? Model auxiliaries, in a written form, it's usually used to show or to express a strong opinion, whether it's in the affirmative way or the negative way. So when it's written, we usually use in the affirmative, could, should, ought to, have to, must. Negative, doesn't have to, shouldn't, can't, must not. The difference, the difference between the two here is that here you say, I think. Here it's a stronger when you say, could or should. It puts an emphasis on it. Now, let's read this letter, keeping in mind the model auxiliaries that we just presented. What I want you to do is that I want you to read it the first time. The second time, try to write the model auxiliary words in your notebook, both if it's the affirmative or the negative. I'll give you two to three minutes. Okay, let's read the paragraph together. Dear editor, more people should ride bicycles into town. Last year, 73% of all families drove their own cars to the center of town. Car traffic in town is really terrible. Parking places are hard to find and pollution from cars is a real problem. Citizens who want a nicer, cleaner place to live off to try this non-polluting form of transportation. Cycling is a good exercise too. The town must not allow this problem to get worse. Instead, people should ride bicycles to different places like school, work, to enjoy the health benefits of daily exercise. James Adams. So, now James Adams wrote this letter to the editor. What I want you to do, as I said, I want you to find out the model auxiliaries that he used to support his opinion. For example, should. Now, what I want you to do, again, look at the paragraph carefully. I'll give you 30 seconds to one minute to note down the model auxiliaries, the affirmative or the negative, in your, on your piece of paper or a notebook. Well, how about we share the answers? Off to. Must not. So here he's showing that he's really upset about it. It's a form. He's really saying that the town must not allow this problem. So he's not saying, in my opinion, I don't like it. Must not. Should. Affirmative. Now, after going through the auxiliary verbs or the auxiliary 
uh, yeah, auxiliary verbs. Let's do another exercise. Now, in this exercise, what I want you to do is, again, I want you to read this letter, and I want you to read it carefully. I gave you the choices of words for the model auxiliaries. I want you to pick the one that you think is correct and that it matches the statement of the sentence. I'll give you two minutes to read it and select your answers. Well, I guess time is up. Let's read it all together. Dear editor, I agree with James Adams' opinion in his recent letter saying that people should slash don't have to ride their bicycles into town. However, there is one problem with this idea. The roads in town are, are so narrow and full of cars that you can't off to ride safely on them. If people are going to ride bicycles into town, the city could slash must make some bikes path for people to use. Maybe the city could or mustn't charge a small additional tax on fuel to pay for the, bi for the bike uh, paths. Motorists have created that the problem, so motorists could slash should pay for the solution, pay for the solution. The city off to doesn't have to support cyclists like James Adams by building more path, more bike paths. Mary Green. What I want you to do is to choose the correct model auxiliary verb that goes within the statement or within the sentence. Again, as I read it out loud, I'm expecting you to have correcting your answers in case you want to double check it. That being said, let's present the model answers. Should. I agree with James Adams' opinion in his recent letter saying that people should ride their bikes into town. Based on what did I say should? Because here I said I agree. Should. The second. Can't. The roads in the town are so narrow and full of cars that you can't ride safely on them. Based on what I, uh, I chose can't, the roads are in town are so narrow and full of cars. So you read the whole thing and based on that, you choose the correct auxiliary verb. Similarly, could. The city could make some bike paths for people to use. Next, maybe the city could charge a small additional tax on fuel to pay for the bike paths. So motorists could pay for the solution. He's suggesting, or she is suggesting, the city ought to support cyclists like James Adams. By that, I believe you have a clear idea of how to use the auxiliary verbs in a sentence or in a paragraph. So now, what I want you to do is, I want you to write a short paragraph using agree or disagree, which is the auxiliary verbs, the affirmative or the negative. The instructions, write a response letter to James Adams expressing your opinion. Using agree or disagree, you could use also, so I'm giving you here a hint, the affirmative words and the negative words. Please note them fast in your notebook or on your paper before I proceed to the upcoming slide. I'm going to give you one minute to note them down. Well, I guess you're done. Let's start writing the paragraph. Now, what I want you to do here is that I gave you a set of sentences. I gave you five sentences, and I want you to use these sentences to form the paragraph. For example, if people are going to ride bicycles into town, the city must make some bikes path for people to use. I agree because I told you to use I agree or disagree in addition to the auxiliary verbs. I agree with James Adams' opinion that people should ride their bikes into town. Now, for writing this paragraph, I'm expecting you 
to be done with it around five minutes or seven. So I'm going to, to give you some time and then we'll check our answers together. Well, I believe time is up. Now, the answer that I'm going to present is a possible answer. Your paragraph can be slightly more or less different, but this is what we're expecting more or less. So let's read the answer or the paragraph together. I agree with James Adams' opinion that people should ride their bicycles into town. However, since the roads in town are so narrow and full of cars, I disagree with the idea that you can ride safely on them. Yet, I agree that if people are going to ride their bicycles into town, the city must make some bike paths for people to use. Maybe the city could charge a small additional tax on fuel to pay for the bike paths. But I totally agree that the motorists have created the problem. So they should pay for the solution. I also agree that the city ought to support cyclists like James Adams by building bike paths. Now, as we see, it's evident in this paragraph that when you write agree or disagree, in order to have it emphasized on your opinion, you use the auxiliary verbs should. Similarly, disagree, can, and so on. So usually when you use your opinion, agree or disagree, or when you write your opinion, agree or disagree, and you want to confirm it and emphasize on it, you use the auxiliary verbs. By that, we came to our end, to the end of our lesson. Thank you and see you next time.